H.R. 1036, the Protection of Lawful Commerce in Arms Act, as we pointed out earlier, addresses the growing concerns of junk lawsuits filed with the intention of driving the firearms industry out of business by simply attempting to hold manufacturers and dealers liable for the criminal acts of third parties who are totally beyond their control. Now, these suits are different from other lawsuits that affect other industries. The cities and counties are not representing specific victims, nor are the claiming specific, nor are they claiming specific damage against city property. No. Instead, they are simply suing because they happen to dislike a product, its appearance, its distribution, and how it markets this product. Yet, under the Constitution, these companies have the constitutional right to manufacture these products. Now, the, earlier, the previous speaker has mentioned that uh, this has been a very quick process, and he thought it was extreme. <clears throat> That's the word he used, extreme, unprecedented. <clears throat> I have on this chart here 31 states have already passed <clears throat> legislation that prohibits frivolous lawsuits against firearm industry. So I say to my colleagues, perhaps your state, when you come on the House floor, you should look at this chart to make sure before you vote, your state has already passed a bill that has recognized the absurdity of these lawsuits. As such, these states have acted to prohibit these type of suits, and H.R. 1036 is designed to mirror simply what the states have done. The goal is to cease the attempts at regulation through lawsuits that achieve nothing except the blatant interference in a company's constitutional right to sell and market a legal product, and the constitutional duty of the Congress to regulate the commerce of such product. As I stated, creative legal theory does not make good public policy. <clears throat> we have seen through the course of these 30-plus uh, suits that uh, have come to the courts, uh, the courts aren't buying the theory e either. And many of these suits have dismissed. If you bear with me, I'll put you, show you another chart. My colleagues, I've just taken a sample of the municipal lawsuits that have been dismissed. In particular, I want to highlight the city of Boston's case. <clears throat> 29 manufacturers and distributors and three associations were defendants. <clears throat> the alleged claim, negligent distribution. <clears throat> Simply distribution was their negligent claim against them and 29 manufacturers were sued, distributors and associations. Defective design, deceptive advertising, nuisance, unjust enrichment. It was dismissed. The city dropped its own suit, saying it was too expensive for the city to do, and acknowledging that through its vigorous prosecution, prosecution the suit would need hundreds of thousands of pages of documents, would go on forever and ever, and not really realistic and concrete in its steps to reduce illegal acquisition of firearms, <clears throat> and to reduce the incidence of firearm accidents and increase public awareness concerning the safe handling and storage of firearms. So the city of Boston voluntarily decided this is wrong. Not the courts decide, but the city of Boston, after spending all this money. But you can go from New Orleans to Miami-Dade County. Twenty-six manufacturers, distributors, three associations and two dealers were all sued simply because of their design, their distribution, and what they said was <clears throat> negligent, deceptive advertising. It was dismissed at trial court, dismissed at appellate court. Florida Supreme Court denied this petition. So it went through every one, the trial court, the appellate court, and the Supreme Court, and they all denied. And my colleagues, this bill that we have here is simply mirroring what's done in the other 31 states.
Now the question comes up, this bill is just a carve out for the firearms industry. The previous speaker mentioned that. So I'd like to bring to his attention other federal legislation that protects specific industries in other cases where these industries or groups have found themselves uniquely threatened by bizarre or novel legal situations. For example, in 1994, we passed legislation, the General Aviation Revitalization Act, which generally protects manufacturers of small planes more than 18 years old against personal injury lawsuits in both federal and state courts. Let's take another act, the Federal Supported Health Centers Assistance Act of 1995, which declared certain community, migrant, homeless health care centers employees to be employees of the Public Health Service, thus protecting them under the Federal Tort Claims Act from malpractice lawsuits in state courts. Another example, Bill Emerson, Good Samaritan Food Donation Act, 1996, which protects nonprofit organizations from state or federal lawsuits arising from the nature, age, packaging, or condition of apparently wholesome food received in good faith donation to benefit the needy. The Volunteer Protection Act of 1997 provides limited immunity from liability for volunteers acting on behalf of a nonprofit organization and preempts inconsistent state law unless such law provides additional protection. The Biomaterials Access Assurance Act of 1998, which supersedes state law to create an exclusion from liability for manufacturers of raw materials or components of medical implants. And need we not forget the Y2K Act of 1999 which limits punitive damages and establishes special procedures for liability in Y2 cases. The Public Health Improvement Act of 2000, which provides Good Samaritan liability protection for users of cardiac defibrillators. So my colleagues, there are simply, literally, dozens and dozens of such pieces of legislation, major pieces of legislation, it's very similar, like this bill, that have been passed by Congress to protect and to enforce protection against nuisance lawsuits. So basically what we have here is a bill that's been co-sponsored by 250 colleagues here in the House. And the bill didn't just happen to come by just recently for anything like a convention of the NRA. This bill has gone through Congress in the 107th Congress. We had almost 240 co-sponsors. It went through the Subcommittee on Commerce, the full committee and passed. It went through the Subcommittee on Judiciary and for the full committee in the 107th Congress. So we have now had even more support for it, so it's time is ripe for passage on the House floor. <clears throat> My colleagues will hear a lot about victims' rights from opponents to this bill. I want to emphatically state that this bill protects victim rights. Their right to sue is protected in this bill relying on product effect, negligent, negligent entrustment, and industry compliance with federal and state law. What is not protected is the use of creative legal theory to sue the deepest pockets. My colleagues, we have a good bill here, one that 250 members of Congress agree with bipartisan, both sides. They agree that using the courts to circumvent the constitutional authority of this body to make public policy is an improper use of our judicial system. I want to close for the moment <clears throat> by giving you several quotes. Dave Koppel, an adjunct, a, a professor, excuse me, at New York University Law School has stated that the city's don't have to win in court with these nuisance suits. All they have to do is keep suing and suing. They'll kill the industry with the cost of defending the lawsuits. He's got it right. And then I would like to give another quote here. This is from a, a, a former labor secretary 
in which he pointed out that if I had my way, we have laws restricting handguns. And we're launching here an effort to succeed where legislation has failed. The strategy may work, but at the cost of making our frail democracy even weaker. You might approve the outcome in these cases, but they establish a precedent for other cases you might find wildly unjust. My point is that most nuisance lawsuits are taking into the courts with an attempt to bankrupt these manufacturers. It's clear the courts agree. It's clear my colleagues agree. It's clear the state legislatures agree. Though I urge my colleagues to support the bill, and I yield back my time. Gentleman from North Carolina.